Hey guys, there's a new update available for the Kia EV6 infotainment system that just came out today and I just installed everything and I have to say there's a couple of pretty significant changes that I'm really excited about. So the update just became available today for the EV6. Other Kia and Hyundai vehicles got it a few days ago, but the EV6 was a little bit later, but I just downloaded it. So I'm on the latest version and I'll go over all the updates I found with you guys. So the first one I'll show you is the sounds of nature. Kia and Hyundai have these pre-recorded sounds that you can play that are relaxing and they added some additional ones here. I'll let you listen to them real quick. I personally don't use them, but if you do, you get more options. And next I'll show you in the split screen, we have a couple of new views. We have this battery and EV charging station information view that shows you your range, state of charge, and nearby station information. You can also switch to any favorite stations you have saved here as well. And then there's also an easy way to view your real-time electricity usage broken down by power, climate, electronics, and battery care. And then going back up to the stations, if you tap more, you can see the stations that are near your location. Here's where you can also filter by operator and charging speeds. And then if you tap on a station, you get more information and can route directly to it. Here it gives you a quick glance at the number of stalls and their status. And if you tap the I button, it gives you more detailed information. So Kia is getting real-time status updates from charging providers, which is great to see. Next up, I'll show you the major change to the EV route planning. I'll go ahead and navigate to Disney World. Here it says available charging stations will be updated while driving, so it maps out the next four stops and it will automatically add more as you go. And there's the big change. It now shows estimated state of charge information and charging times at each stop. You'll remember from the video where I enabled this in engineering mode, it had that information, but the last official software update didn't include it. Well, now it's good to go and it's officially rolled out to everybody. You can tap on each individual charger to get more information about it. I have my DC charge limit set to 90%, so you can see that's what's included here. And it's allowing me to get down to 19% state of charge at one of the stops, so it's leaving somewhat of a buffer, but not too much. Ideally, that's something that we can customize in the future, though. But yeah, it looks good, and I'm excited to test that out in the future. Remember, when it's cold outside, you definitely want to make sure you use this for the route planning so the battery conditioning kicks in and warms the battery for faster charging speeds. Now, if you use Android Auto or CarPlay, it will disable the Kia navigation if you put a route into Waze or Google Maps. One great way to get around this, though, is if you have the T-Box Plus that I reviewed on my channel, I'll post a link to that in the description for you guys, but you can run Waze or Google Maps directly on the T-Box Plus at the same time that you run the Kia navigation. So it allows you to bypass that limitation and still get the battery preconditioning while you are using Waze or Google Maps. Now another small update I found is for people with a trailer hitch. So when you connect the trailer wiring to the Kia pre-wiring in the past, it adds this trailer mode option, but now there's also a trailer checklist that gives you several important reminders of things that you should really be checking prior to driving with a trailer behind the car. So that's good to have those reminders there. And then lastly, one of the biggest changes I'm most excited about is with the sound. So Kia has finally fixed the sound in the Kia EV6. Previously, you really needed to crank it up to around 40 or 50 to get a lot of volume out of the speakers, and there wasn't ever really that much bass. Well, now you just need to set the volume at around 10 or so to get a lot of volume, and they've adjusted the tuning of the speakers to add in more bass. I can't really capture the bass that well, so you'll just have to take my word for it, but I'll show you the speakers using the Sirius XM channel here. You can see setting it at 8 is fairly loud. And pumping it up to 20 is really loud. It's actually too loud. 
So that's something I'm definitely excited about. The EV6 audio system has been a point of frustration for a lot of owners. And with this update, I think most people will be very happy. So that's what I found that changed in the EV6's infotainment system update for October 2023. Let me know if you have any questions on anything I went over. Let me know if you find anything that I didn't go over uh, that changed in your vehicle. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about this update, especially the audio changes and the EV route planning updates there. Um, let me know if you have any questions on installing the update as well. I definitely wouldn't recommend waiting for an over-the-air update because they are kind of few and far between and kind of sporadic and not the most reliable timing-wise. And I wouldn't put off getting this update. So I'll post a link in the description for you guys uh, of a video I did that shows you how to manually install the update yourself. It's actually pretty easy. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more videos. I have a lot coming and I will see you guys in the next video.